this could be a long afternoon. Which um, so, Lauren, are you in charge? Yes. Okay. Okay, Commissioners, today for our last session of the week, we have six presentations. I do want to note that I put an updated hearing schedule at your chairs for you. And today we'll be starting with Operations Support Services. We'll be on page 116 of your binder. They have four decision packages starting on page 525. And I'm going to turn it over to Tanya Cole. All right, well, good afternoon, Commissioners and Chairman. Uh, Tanya Cole, Interim Operations Support Services Director. Um, I'm here this afternoon to talk to you about Operation Support Services 2018 budget development. Um, before I get started, I would like to introduce the uh, division managers here today. Uh, Bob Campbell is the building services manager. He's covering for Greg Tuxhorn, who is the facility manager. Uh, he's out at the moment. Penny Poland, uh, fleet director. Daryl Haynes, uh, courthouse police chief. And Anna Meyer Hoff, uh, central services manager. Operation Support Services Mission and Services. Uh, our mission is to provide accessible, safe, efficient, and highly productive buildings and structures where citizens and employees are able to conduct their business and access needed services. I'll be speaking today uh, in today's presentation about facility services, central services, and fleet. GIS will be covered in uh, the presentation done by Wes Ellington uh, with ITS. Maintenance services operates and maintains most county facilities. Uh, courthouse police ensures security at main and juvenile complexes. Um, project services leads new building projects, alterations of existing planning and property lease management. Uh, our county facilities enable county operations. Our customers are both the general public and employees. We rely on internal staff and external vendors for our service delivery and effective work environments that are safe and pleasant are necessary for the public and our employees. Again, uh, facility services that encompasses project services, maintenance services, and courthouse police. Our 2018 uh, request includes funding for services and property tax funds. That includes uh, maintenance services that does preventive maintenance and reactive repair for most county buildings. Maintenance services track the per, uh, percentage of useful life remaining of HVAC and rust for each building. Each maintenance service worker uh, will be responsible for an average of 67,000 square feet of property. Our courthouse police services include providing a weapons-free environment for visitors and occupants at our courthouses. That's uh, the main courthouse and the juvenile courthouse. Courthouse police screens on an annual basis over 730,000 with a goal of less than two minutes to enter the screening magnetometer. And then last is project services who administrates and implements facility CIP projects, administers and manages leased properties and provides oversight and coordination of department remodels. Project services uh, has an average of seven CIP projects uh, per project manager with a total value of nine million managed by each project manager. Oh, I need to be forwarding this. I apologize. Okay. Uh, facility service services 2018 budget request for the general fund. The request is for $8,460,280. In fleet management, the request is for $90,000. So for a total of uh, $8,550,280. Within that budget request, uh, it, in the uh, particular uh, commitment item funds in personnel, we have a request of uh, $3,882,274, uh, just a little over $4.1 in contractuals, commodities $472,621, again for a total of $8,550,280. I do have uh, four decision packages I'll be uh, speaking about. Uh, the first one and our first priority uh, among those four is uh, for electricity and water sewer rate increase. Uh, we see annual rate escala escalations in utilities um, that have been occurring over the last several years. So this request would provide for a 5% increase in electricity and water sewer charges. This would allow maintenance services to continue at current service level and their mission rather than uh, having to defer any maintenance. Uh, 
that request is for $110,354. <clears throat> the second decision package, um, which is actually a priority of three out of four, um, is the Fast Pass program funding. This is a program that allows frequent visitors to the courthouse to enter without the standard security screening if a background check is passed. Uh, we do receive revenue um, by participant fees that are deposited into the general fund. Courthouse police budget has not increased to cover the costs uh, of background checks and materials. Currently there are 225 participants and this is an enhancement to current services. Uh, I believe Courthouse Police estimates that we will have uh, 350 participants that will be enrolling in the program uh, in the next year. So that request again to cover uh, those background checks and materials is $9,450. The third package I'll be speaking to, and this uh, received a, a priority of four out of four, is the X-ray Machines Service Inflation Adjustment. Uh, courthouse Police operates three cabinet x-ray machines uh, at both the main courthouse and the juvenile courthouse that require annual service and inspections. Uh, the annual maintenance contracts, we've seen it increase annually since 2010. This cost is required to maintain current service levels uh, for secor security of courthouse uh, visitors. And Courthouse Police is no longer able to absorb these costs within the Courthouse Police budget. And so to cover that inflation adjustment, we're requesting $2,000. So again, just to summarize for facility services, we have three decision packages. Again, that's uh, electricity and water sewer rate increase at $110,354, the Fast Pass program funding at $9,450, and the X-ray Machines service inflation adjustment for a total of $121,804. Moving on to Fleet, uh, Fleet's mission is to provide proper vehicles and equipment, effective fuel service and high quality, timely maintenance and repairs to meet the operational needs of supported Sedgwick County government and departments. Uh, Fleet provide the right vehicles and equipment together with timely maintenance and repair. Uh, they, uh, their goal is to minimize equipment downtime and disruption. Uh, all county services are directly benefited by Fleet and services uh, in fleet are de delivered mostly by internal fleet staff. <clears throat> in our 2018 budget request for services uh, in, in non-tax fund, that would uh, be for fleet administration. This program provides administration and planning for fleet operations, and the goal is to have a fleet availability of 95%. We have the heavy equipment shop, which maintains all vehicles and equipment with a gross weight of one ton or greater. Uh, this shop provides uh, preventive maintenance and unscheduled maintenance to reduce vehicle downtime. Uh, Public Works is uh, one of the largest customers for the heavy equipment shop. Fuel, uh, this program provides fuel and car wash services to all Sedgwick County vehicles and equipment from mul uh, multiple fueling stations at the main yard and various public work yards. Fuel tanks and pumps uh, must be monitored on a daily basis to stay in compliance with KDHE. Additionally, we have the body shop services, which is vendor provided and does body damage repair for vehicles equipment when necessary. We have the light equipment shop, which provides efficient and effective repairs to all vehicles under one ton with the emphasis on preventive maintenance and safety inspections. Biggest customer in that shop is uh, Sheriff and EMS and new vehicle setups are also completed in this shop. We have the uh, vehicle acquisition, which provides replacement of existing vehicles uh, equipment that meet that meet uh, replacement criteria. Replacing vehicles at a pre-established mileage age help to uh, maintain reliability uh, while keeping costs per mile hour at a minimum. We also have the fleet airplane. Uh, this program supports the sheriff's airplane including all fuel invoices, monthly maintenance, and unscheduled repairs. And then uh, the 2018 budget request would also um, fund services for the vehicle acquisition contingency, which provides a source of funding for emergency equipment acquisitions and unforeseeable fluctuations in the cost of fuel. For the fleet 2018 budget request, uh, the request is $10,037,747.
Within those commitment items, uh, personnel at $1,026,846, contractuals at $533,611, uh, commodities at almost uh, $3.4 million, and capital equipment at $5,078,768, again for a total request of $10,037,747. Moving on to central services mission and, and services. Uh, central services mission is to partner with county departments and division divisions to provide quality customer service and resources that are efficient and cost effective. Uh, our printing services department provides in-house printing of uh, most of the county's large scale printing projects uh, that achieve a scale of efficiency that reduces overall printing costs. We have our mail room that's responsible for processing and providing postage on outgoing mail pieces as well as in our office mail for both the county and district court. Uh, they also assist divisions with planning for large mailings. We have records management who is responsible for implementing county records management policy as well as storing inactive records on site, controls access to records stored at commercial storage sites, and processes records destructions for BOCC approval. Uh, within Central Services also is the call center, which answers phone calls from the public and provides information on matters relating to tax, tag, appraisal, and comp care questions. Within that uh, 2018 budget request, uh, that includes funding for services, as I mentioned previously, for the mailroom, who assist departments with the planning for large mailings, uh, the outgoing mail and inner office mail, Printing, again, which handles all large-scale print jobs and performs graphic design. Records management, which manages uh, physical record retention and destruction, uh, leads county compliance with CORA. And the combined call center, which addresses, again, tax, appraisal, tag, elections, and comp care questions and concerns. It's projected that they will receive 24,500 calls uh, to be answered each month. So the Central Services uh, 2018 budget request is $2,504,780. Within that budget, those commitment item requests are $1,323,669 in personnel, contractuals of $159,551, and commodities at $1,021,560, again, for a total of $2,504,780. We do have a decision package in central services. This was uh, prioritized as two out of four, um, and that's for midterm election postage. Uh, this request is to provide postage uh, that will support the election commissioner with midterm elections. Uh, the mailroom provides support in processing notifications of polling location changes, advanced voting information, and vote by mail ballots. So that request is for 150,000. Again, just repeating again, uh, Central Services decision package of midterm election postage at 150,000. So to summarize for operation support uh, services, uh, the total request is $21,092,807. Within that is facility services at 8.5 million, fleet services at just a little over 10 million, and central services at 2.5 million. And then again, just to summarize, and this is in priority, department priority order, we have four decision packages uh, before you. Facility services, the electricity, water, sewer rate increase at $110,354. Central services, midterm election postage of $150,000. Facility services, the fast pass programming funding uh, for material, excuse me, materials and uh, uh, background checks at $9,450. And lastly, facility services, x-ray machines, uh, service inflation adjustment at $2,000 for a total grand total of $271,804. That's my presentation. I'm happy to answer any questions you might have. Uh, Commissioner Dennis. Thank you. Just one quick question. Why is the $150,000 for the election uh, not in the election commissioner's budget? Uh, the, the mail room and the print shop, uh, they are the department that uh, s spends the postage for the entire organization. Is that correct, Anna? 
So that's why that would be in our budget because we're the ones that facilitate the mailing and the printing for departments. But they mail out advanced ballots, they mail out a ton of stuff. Uh, why is just this one thing except different from everything else they mail out? There's the postage for elections office is also in in the mail room. This is just additional funding. All postage costs are contained for the entire county within the mail room's budget. Okay, so this is just something that's just unique because this one election. Every other year, we have to ask money when there's an election because we do such a large, larger amount of mail pieces. All right, thank you. I, I thought last year the election office, though, had a decision package for mail or, or the Not year before or something. Not for postage. They have, so they've had the decision budget. packages. It's in their budget. I'll verify that for you, and, and or Lauren can, and we'll get that. Maybe back. it was in the budget then or something. I, okay, I'm going to confuse it. Oh, I'm was just really the election question. It's been a long time since I've had cost accounting, but normally you try and put all the <coughs> costs in the right account so that you can account for what their budget is. And his, I mean, we do try to do that, but in some instances, we do have centralized services that we try to do. So, for example, ITS, when you hear about their budget request, you'll hear about a lot of um, maintenance costs that they pay that may not necessarily support a particular service, but it is because we were trying to track all those costs in one place and have our experts do it, have the experts go out and get the contracts to get the pricing to do all of that. And so it's, it's we believed it was more efficient to uh, tackle it in that fashion. To say the call center is spread out amongst many of the organizations, in which we get a stipend from their budget in order to perform those services. Do, do we, um, we, we used to have our own body shop, didn't we? And is this a good decision that we don't do that anymore? We haven't, I mean, Penny, can you answer this question? We have saved money with, with outsourcing the body shop. So, I mean, have you analyzed to see if it's um, worthwhile for us to start doing our own body work? You know, body costs fluctuate from year to year depending on how many accidents we have, how many hill, hill storms that we have. In the last four years since we've had, since we eliminated the body shop, and those two positions, we have spent less with the vendor than with than with our two people. Okay. Well, <coughs> satisfies me. I mean, I know I was in the body business for a while. I know how high priced they are. This is also one of the areas that uh, I've been talking with Bob uh, Layton about the potential merging of fleet maintenance in some form or fashion as a joint entity. Um, but we're still in current discussion of it because we would save money and we would save cost. Well, I think that's probably um, a good discussion, and I think especially on something like body work that might be. I just wouldn't want us to get in a position where because of the merger we have um, a secondary priority to, right. you know, to, to right. want, I want our cars to get in and out for us. Okay, well, that's my question. Thank you. <clears throat> Uh, Commissioner Hell. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just uh, back on the postage question, I'm looking at the uh, decision package explanation on page 531. It mentions that there were changes in state law in 2013, requires more notifications to voters. Can we, what is that exactly? What are the changes in state law that were made? Uh, that would be the SAFE Act and an increased amount of um, mailings that we do to people who did not provide proof of citizenship documents. Instead of sending, um, well, before we didn't send any mailers, and then that has morphed into now we send three for every person who doesn't provide that document. Okay, so you try to contact them up to three times, you said? Well, if they provide a phone number, we also oh. call them. Sometimes it's many times more than three, but the minimum is three. Okay, and then um, I'm, I'm curious, uh, I think we we bought enough equipment to increase our poll sites. Uh, yes. I think there's a plan to go from 60 something about 65 poll sites to closer to 100 or so. That's still the plan. Yes, but we're not doing it all in one large chunk. We're increasing over time because first of all, it's very costly. I think the cost to increase 
as many as we had kind of mapped out that we needed was going to be well over $100,000 a year. And so we're kind of doing that incrementally. We don't expect uh, – so part of what you'll see in my budget, which is next, is addressing adding some polling locations this year, and we'll just start slowly adding them each year. Part of that process was also because we do not believe that we can find enough polling locations and get that done in one year. So we're just going to do it incrementally. Okay. I, I guess what I'm, I'm wondering is uh, there was a, a while there we were uh, sending out mailings from the election office trying to really encourage uh, mail ballot mail ballots. So I guess that was a choice the election office made at some point and that mm -hmm. we're still doing that. Is that right? Yes, and that is included in that postage and in my budget request as well. All right. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. That's all I have. Thank you. I don't see anyone. Any other questions? So, uh, Anya, thank you. Thank you, Commissioners. Lorian? Commissioners, our next presentation will be from our election commissioner, Tabitha Lehman. We on page 49 of your binder, and she will have five decision packages she'll be talking about that will start on page 514. So I'm going to turn it over to Tabitha. We'll give her a minute to get everything passed out to you guys. Thank you. You all don't have to leave. <laughs> <laughs> I put those all in a binder for you because I didn't know if I was going to be having a whole bunch of rain on the way over here, so I wanted to keep it dry for you. So after talking with Lindsay, one of the things that we decided to do differently this year is because Kansas law requires me to certify my budget to you, I'm doing that at this point when I do this presentation. So that's why you have this um, page that says certifi certification 2018 budget. That's the official certification as required by law, and then those budget pages and then um, printout of the presentation. So I'm just going to jump right in and do this presentation for you. Our mission is to provide all eligible Sedgwick County citizens the opportunity to register to vote and to participate in an informed manner in simple, accessible, and secure elections. We really only have two divisions, and that would be the administration side of the election office and then the election operations side. <coughs> administration of election practices, we seek to create the highest level of efficiency within our office. We seek to provide quality public service. Uh, we serve all eligible residents of Sedgwick County. Right now we have close to 300,000 registered voters. Um, elections are the foundation on which the United States government is built. Our s services are delivered by a combination of internal and external employees. <coughs> I will apologize. I am fighting a cold, so I may stop and cough, and I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, we have within the administration side, we have voter registration, which our uh, goal there is to maintain clean and accurate voter registration rolls. As required by federal and state law, all voter registration must be processed in a timely and accurate manner. Um, then we would have customer service or reception of public, provide effective communication to the public regarding the services provided by the election office and Sedgwick County. And then we have kind of a, a catch-all, which we just call special projects, which is continued district boundary verifications, petitions as they come in, uh, voter education outreach, and researching new technologies. Our um, administration budget request for 2018 is $671,911. That is down 10% from uh, 2017. Part of that is because some of the costs have gone up and we, we took those out of the 18 request and you'll see them in decision packages. So we took what we were paying out of the 18 request, but you'll see that increase in the decision package with new voting equipment. <coughs> um, that covers uh, $625,162, sorry, $625,162 for personnel, uh, about $39,000 for contractuals, um, almost $8,000 for commodities, again, for that total of $671,911. Uh, our decision package for the administration, administrative side is the voter registration database fees. Federal and state law requires the election office to maintain voter registration records in the statewide voter registration database. These costs have been being paid by the state using federal endowment funds, Help America Vote Act. 
those funds are no longer available and the costs are now being passed down to the counties. So we have been paying $15,000 a year and our new yearly licensing fee is $65,000 a year. So that is the decision package for administration. <coughs> Election operations. Um, this consists of the logistical branch of the election side of administration, L the logistical coordination of all polling locations, equipment, supplies, and personnel to conduct safe and accurate elections. We serve all Cedric County voters. Again, elections are the foundation on which U.S. government is built, and this is done with a combination of both internal and external staff. <coughs> Pardon me. Um, we have election boards, appointment of bipartisan election boards to facilitate the accurate and efficient tallying of votes cast and to serve the public in a nonpartisan manner. A polling place, acquis acquisition of sufficient ADA accessible polling locations throughout Cedric County to accommodate expected voter turnout. Advanced voting by mail, uh, purpose of this is First off, it is required by law that we offer it, but it's also, um, we use it more because we are relieving pressure from election day polling sites and to provide more convenient, convenient voting options for Cedric County voters. Early voting, early in-person voting would be the same thing, is to relieve pressure on election day polling sites and to provide more convenient voting options for Cedric County voters. We have candidate services. Um, effectively communicate with current and prospective candidates for public office, providing election statistics and voter data upon request. And then equipment maintenance, complete preventative maintenance and election specific testing to ensure the accuracy of voting equipment and to maintain state and federal certification of the voting fleet, or voting equipment fleet. Um, our elections operation budget request for 2018 is $553,894, and you will see that's down almost 70%. That looks like I'm doing a really great job, but really that difference is because in 2017, we asked for that remainder, the $1.5 million, to buy the voting equipment. That was a one-time purchase. We obviously don't need that in this year, next year's budget. Um, that is divided out in personnel would be $350,546. You'll notice that's a significant increase over personnel for 2017. That is because we have gubernatorial election and are expecting, especially without a, an incumbent candidate on the ballot, that we will have higher turnout. We will also have um, a primary that will have higher turnout than what we had, well, are likely to have for the city and school elections this year. Um, our contractuals are down, um, $111,330. Commodities, $92,019 for a total of $553,894. Decision packages for election operations. This first one, Commissioner Howell, you'll be interested in is the addition of 10 polling locations. Uh, this is to provide better access to voting and to reduce election day lines. Um, our estimate to add 10 polling location is 26,228. And we are requesting an addition of 0.5 FTEs, that is for election workers to staff those polling locations. Or 0 0.50, my, my apologies. The next de uh, decision package is for voting equipment maintenance fees. This is to provide preventative maintenance on new voting equipment to prolong lifespan and maintain compliance with federal and state certifications. I would mention on this decision package, this, these costs were included in the uh, presentation that was presented to this board um, in the 10-year cost of owning the voting equipment that you all unanimous, well, there were a couple different commissioners, but that was unanimously voted on when we selected this voting equipment. This is just the first year that we're putting this in our budget, but this has already actually been voted on by the board. Same thing with this next one, uh, new software. It is, a, it is an increase from the old software. The old software we paid $7,800 a year for. This is about $42,000 a year. And I will tell you, we were getting $7,800 worth of software and we're now getting $42,000 worth of software. It's amazing <laughs> in comparison and it's worth every single penny. But this again was included in that 10-year that cost of the voting equipment when the decision was made to purchase it. This is just the first year we put it in the budget. Electronic poll book licensing fee. I sound like a broken record. This you've also voted on when we when we voted to um, buy the electronic poll books. This was included in that life that that cost for the lifetime of the poll books. 
and this is fifty thousand dollars to use those poll books it gives us access to the um, database central database is required to operate the poll books but then also provides us with software patches and usage enhancements for security upgrades so our total <coughs> Decision packages from election operations is 330603 with 0.50 FTEs. So our total budget uh, request, not including those decision packages, is 1.225805. And then the total with all of the decision packages is 395603. And that is my presentation. Thank you, Commissioners. Commissioner Hell. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Could you go back to slide 14, please? That's a good one. Um, yeah. Yes. Sorry. That's the top line. You said a number of things when you talked about personnel and the yes. 17 versus 18. Can you please repeat what you said? I'm, I'm, uh, I, I'm sure I probably won't get it verbatim, but I can probably do it better this time. Um, the difference there is mainly because it's a gubernatorial election instead of city school. We expect because there is not an incumbent governor on the ballot that we will have higher voter turnout. We will also have a primary, which the primary in and of itself will have higher turnout compared to city school of this year, even those combined probably. So we're, we're just looking at hiring a lot more election workers because the election turnout is expected to be much higher. We also, um, because the equipment is still new, training for the election workers will be five hours instead of three, and that adds additional costs there. So. I think I forgot that training component when I was because talking earlier. So because of the cycle of the election office, gubernatorial, city school, presidential, city school, right? it'd be nice to see more than two years on your budget uh, for history and kind of know what things. Some things, again, like the $150,000 decision package that was presented just a little bit ago, mm -hmm. I guess I didn't ask a question, but I was curious, did it go down the previous year because it wasn't as it was a city school year. Oh, 17 was a city yes, school year. Yes, it would have. Yeah, I don't so, think they even did a decision package for my postage for yes. this for 17. Although they probably should have because we ended up with a congressional special. Well, anyway, <laughs> um, it'd be nice to see on your only because of the strange cyclic nature of your mm -hmm. office. That it'd be nice to see something more than two years of history on yours specifically. I don't know if that would be something you can uh, help us with. Maybe go back. You know, again, a four-year cycle would be better in, your, in this case. I think on your know. budget pages, actually, it goes back to 2015, yeah. so that at least yeah. gives you to the last city school election. Yeah. Okay. Um, it's just not on the slides. Okay, I'll have to spend some time looking at that. The other question I had was on uh, decision packages. It seems like we don't really have a decision on at least three of these. Um, yeah, we don't. Well, three of them you've already made the decision when you decided to purchase them. So the decision's already been made. This is just the first time we're putting it in the budget. So I need to explain to you why it's that much more. I guess maybe someone needs to explain a little bit as to why this is a decision <coughs> package. Why is it not just part of the base budget request? Um, do you mean, okay, because I kind of have my understanding of a decision package is, is if it's increasing it significantly over what I have had in the past, then we need to explain explain that or maybe I'm not explaining that well. <laughs> well I mean, you're, you're capturing it. Basically, okay. when a, as a procedural thing, when we set out with a flat budget as the request and that's what we're presenting for everyone else, we want to make sure that there's a fairness issue where folks are coming in and, and kind of justifying and able to articulate why those increases may be happening so that maybe it's not necessarily a decision point. We need to do it, but it's advertising <coughs> what the changes are to you when it's that flat budget that we're starting. I, I'm pretty confident that if I had come to you with that amount of money more in this budget, you would have wanted an explanation. So this just gave it to you up front. And looking at your numbers a little bit closer, and I have not looked at the, the sheets in the big bigger book just as closely as I would like to here shortly. But if you if you subtract out the 1.5 million that we used for last year of the election equipment, the costs. I mean, although it does look like the costs are, let me find the sheet here real quickly. Hang on. I apologize. I got two pages in front of me here. Yeah, based on I guess on, on slide thirteen, slide thirteen, it looks like you went down nearly seventy percent. But in right. reality, if you subtract out the one point five million dollars, your request for eighteen is actually up quite a bit. Okay. Right. Again, gubernatorial election year. 
I did I did want to explain I didn't really reduce my budget request by 70%. All right. I'll spend some time looking at the, the, the bigger book here to get my, my brain wrapped around what I just basically said a second ago, but I uh, appreciate the presentation. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Anything else? Madam Commissioner, thank you. Thank you. Lauren, are we moving along? Yes. Uh, our next presentation, we're going to jump to the county counselor's office. We'll be on page 32 of your binders. I want to thank Eric Yost for coming in early. So I'm going to turn it over to him. Are you walking out on me? Yeah. Are you going to help me get to the podium? <laughs> Jessica's printing them. Hit the space bar for next, or you can hit. Oh. And handouts will be coming I shortly. Get to I'm not, I'm you want me to do it? Okay. I can grab a mouse and you say next and I'll click it. Oh, I can probably swing it. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. All right. I've never, I've never handled the slideshow before, so you'll have to bear with me. Um, I'm Eric Yost. I'm a county counselor, and I'm going to visit with you about my budget request. I'll begin by discussing uh, my mission um, as county counselor and our mission as the county counselor's office. It's our job to provide um, high quality nonpartisan legal services to the commissioners but also to the manager and to departments and divisions and other elected officials. Uh, we have divided our uh, mission into four areas that I think previously and historically the commissioners have wanted to track. One of those tracks is the office administration, which is our way of trying to attribute how much of our budget goes to supervision of attorneys and the management and budgeting and purchasing function of what we do. Uh, the vast bulk of our uh, work is going to be in the legal services um, funding center or whatever you want to call it. Uh, quite a bit of our budget is in that and that's where our legal work is actually done and where we provide you with help and we do that through legal opinions and through representing the county in court uh, we also prepare of course all contracts and agreements a lot of what we do uh, behind the scenes especially on jail claims and other types of claims is try to mitigate mitigate our potential uh, liability on matters we also track uh, our expenditures and receipts in county court we obviously we have uh, the county code that needs to be enforced and we do that through uh, our code enforcement officers and the county court and so we have tracked that historically and then finally we uh, some time ago they began setting out uh, separating our outside counsel so people will know how much we spend on outside counsel that's our fourth uh, funding center um, and we use outside counsel for specialized things like bond counsel where it just wouldn't really make a lot of sense to have someone who knows how to do bond work in our office when it would be a few hours a year. Um, so we use outside counsel for that. We also use outside counsel for uh, some litigation. Uh, and, and I have taken to using outside counsel for researching of issues. Counselors may, uh, commissioners may have questions or some other department head might have a question and I would prefer to send that out um, to outside counsel so they do some of that. Um, our, our budget request uh, this year and our budget almost all of it comes out of uh, general fund uh, receipts uh, for your information. I think the quality of our performance, uh, our quality of performance uh, indicators uh, I feel like our we're doing pretty well. We, we spent 13,000 hours doing legal work uh, for the county uh, in, in 2016. Uh, and we also took a survey of all the management team, which hadn't been done in about 10 years, to ask them if they are satisfied with uh, our performance and the work we're doing. Uh, and 98% of them said that they were. And so we may make that an annual thing I'm, I'm not certain yet uh, our budget request which you'll see here on this page 
uh, shows those four categories that I've already described to you, uh, and our re total request is $1.7 million. Uh, it's, a, it's a little bit up from last year, not by a lot. Uh, we did do an upgrade of the less senior attorney's salaries to be able to attract and retain attorneys so they don't go out, we don't train them and they go off to you know uh, work against us in the private sector uh, so we want to keep those attorneys if we can uh, and we've also had some in increase in our costs on doing computer research so that's that's part of the explanation of why we've had a little bit of an increase uh, we also have of course the budget broken down by our type of thing and the overwhelming majority of it as it is probably with every department uh, is our personnel costs uh, and, and with that, it's not, not a lot of razzle-dazzle there, but that's our request. Uh, do you have any questions that you have of me? Uh, Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I see on the uh, budget book, page 35, it talks about uh, Judge Pro Tem. It's a position about... I didn't know, I didn't know it was in, in, our, in our county court, uh, we have judges, uh, and then we have to pay them, and so they they rotate. We've got I think, two or three judges, and we rotate them depending on their schedules, one afternoon a week, and we pay them uh, per diem for that. Okay, all right, thank you. All my questions, thank you, Mr. Chairman. And former the former chief judge, Judge Corrigan, is one of those judges. Uh, I think uh, we've got an attorney in one. I think we also have former Judge Owens as one of our judges. Um, Mr. Counselor, I guess the amount that you're requesting for 2018 on outside counsel, that's based about on what you spent this year? Or is that yes, we've reduced it both years that I've been here. Okay. It started out at 300 and some thousand. Uh, that's what it was the year I came in, and I, I haven't used it as much as maybe I, I could have, but uh, I've reduced it again this year. Okay, well, the 300 or a little bit larger, and that's what I've seen for many, many years. And right. this is hundred thousand dollars less. But you're at, you're confident that you're right. I think we can. Okay, good. All right. Any other questions? I don't see any. So. All right. Well, thank you, Commissioner. Counselor, thank you very much. Commissioners, next we're going to go to the county manager's office. Be on page twenty-six of your binders. And they have four decision packages that will start on page 506. We'll just give them just a minute. Four sounds so large. Thank you. Yeah, I'll kick it off. Um, commissioners, uh, Mike Scholes, County Manager. Uh, I have my uh, book open to page 29 that kind of encapsulates some of the changes that you'd see, especially in the County Manager's office since last year. If you remember last year about this time, we started the reorganization process, and the budget that you would have known as the County Manager's office before that was slightly different. Um, so this year it encapsulates the totality of the reorganizational moves. Uh, if you notice, uh, the county manager, the deputy county manager, two assistant county managers, and then we're missing a, an assistant county manager uh, of public works, uh, facility maintenance and project services uh, with David Spears. Uh, he will maintain that within the public works uh, department just based off of the legalities of that and, and uh, it will come out of his budget. Uh, so that's uh, really the big change uh, there. Second change you'll notice is in the communications team. If you notice last year we brought on Couture as the corporate communications manager, also Kate as the PIO. Um, and when they came in, especially uh, when they became a team, I asked them to look at the potential for us to uh, reorganize better to become a better, more effective communications team. So this year's budget is going to reflect some of that. Uh, that you'll be briefed here in a minute. Uh, so 
Uh, I think uh, by the end we'll have a corporate communications manager uh, with two PIOs, um, a couple of uh, uh, video graphics uh, artists, uh, and, and that will be the heart of the team. And matter of fact, it will also cause a little shuffle here on the floor in which the communications team will probably move back into the office directly across from the BOCC. Uh, because of the robust nature of what we're what we're trying to do, or at least to build synergy within the communications team, uh, so uh, I look forward to how that unfolds. But this uh, budget reflects a little bit of that change, uh, and also, uh, if you notice uh, that we have an internal performance auditor on board now that we didn't have last year, uh, and and Catherine is, is certainly making headway within the organization. Um, looking at processes, procedures, many of the ones uh, you've probably seen or heard about, but uh, she is at the heart of that and making uh, big strides in that regard. So those are some of the changes right there that, uh, that uh, you'll be briefed on, um, and I look forward to your questions. Good afternoon. I am also finding a cold, so I apologize in advance. As the manager explained, by the county manager's office, sure quality public services are provided to our community by providing efficient and responsive support to the BOCC and effective administration of the Cedric County organization. Programs within our office include the manager's office, corporate communications and public information office, and ADA administration. As he also mentioned, including the county manager, we have the executive team and the internal process auditor. Uh, department works to ensure essential services and programs are provided to citizens in an efficient, effective, and timely manner. Another program within our department is the Corporation, sorry, Corporate Communications and Public Information Office. They serve as a link between county programs and services to the citizens of the community by, by providing information about current activities and issues of the county government and its departments and divisions. They also serve as liaisons for communication with all county staff. This is achieved through publications, website, video, social media, brochures, communications with mass media outlets, employee newsletters, and, and more. Another function of our office is also the ADA administration. The ADA administration program is intended to accomplish the ADA transition plan. Uh, the transition plan was scheduled to be completed in 2018 to provide accessible facilities to all citizens and employees. We currently contract with an ADA consultant to assist special projects and human resources with ADA compliance, implementation, and answering any questions we might have. Uh, our budget is completely uh, funded by property tax. However, having said that, the management interns, we have three FTEs, their wages and benefits are reimbursed to us by Wichita State out of their mill levy. One comment on the interns, uh, we've hired next year's interns. Uh, we've got three high quality uh, interns coming in. One's a PhD, Doctor of Community Development. Uh, one has an MBA, uh, and then the other is an internal candidate, communications intern, uh, Emily from uh, the clerk's office, who is, uh, is going to fill out that functional area. Uh, and if you notice, uh, I didn't get three MPA uh, you know, students. Uh, I wanted some diversity, different functional areas because we have a diverse function uh, within the county manager's office, but all three of them will be used in different, different areas uh, to support the different assistant and, and deputy and, and uh, me uh, specifically in the different areas that we deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, so we're pretty excited about that, but they are three uh, real high-quality candidates. Uh, Mr. Manager, we're not under any obligation with WSU to hire interns from the Hugo Wall School? No, sir. Okay. They start right after Memorial Day, so you'll be seeing them here this summer with us. Okay. Our budget request, uh, we have three cost centers, okay. County Manager's Office, Communications PIO, and ADA Administration. The 2018 request is $1.275 for the manager's office, $629,284 for the corporate communications and PIO, and ADA administration is 28064 
On that line, you will notice the significant decrease from 2017. The reason for that is most of that fund or cost center is C CIP funds. Those have not been added in yet. So that number will go back up once the CIP has been established. The general fund total for 2018 request is $1,932,352. This also talks about the manager's office at all funds. Personnel is 1,663,314. Contractuals are 239,557. Debt service, zero. Commodities, 29,481. For a total of 1,932,352. And I'm going to turn this over to Kate so she can talk about our decision packages. We do have four this year. Thank you. So our first decision package is a contract with KPTS. As you know, we have an annual contract with KPTS for broadcasting services. Um, this contract, the rates have not changed in a number of years, over 10 years, and KPTS has indicated that there will be a rate increase starting in 2018. And so in order to cover that, to cover our costs, we are requesting $20,000 to accommodate this and continue our relationship with KPTS um, should it be continued when we renew the contract later this year. The second decision package is for marketing materials and promotional items. Um, community engagement and communications are the third priority of our strategic plan that we've agreed upon, and this fund, this these funds would be created to allow for an increased amount of the tangible materials, the giveaways, the free stuff, what draws people to your booth, fairs, festivals, and employee and community events. Um, like I said, the tangible things, posters, brochures, the, the fun stuff. And so we are requesting $7,000 for those items. A third package, again with community engagement, along with uh, this third priority of our strategic plan in order for us to be an effective and uh, engaging partner within our community, we are requesting $3,500 to be a better partner. Um, as you can see, the manager's office budget currently covers some of these expenses, but does not have the capacity to absorb an increased number of events. Um, and we are interested in becoming a better partner within our community and uh, meeting people where they are. So $3,500 for that package. And then our final decision package is for another FTE, for a graphic designer. As you can see, priority number three is the communications and the engagement of the strategic plan. And so as part of this, the art director has currently served as the main graphic designer to support all of our county divisions and departments in providing the avenues to creatively and effectively deliver their message to the public. He's the point of contact for the county brand and make sure that we look good when we're out in the public. And Tony does a phenomenal job and works really hard at doing this. Um, Along with that, and with the strategic plan, our communications team has focused more on meeting with departments to recognize their needs and how we can better serve them. With this great partnership, we've developed um, some sort of liaisons, a liaison task force that helps us figure out what we need to do and how we can help them. And so with this partnership we have now with divisions and departments, the amount of work has increased. And so this position has been working uh, significantly extra hours, significantly more hours. And by adding a second graphic designer, we can have a quicker turnaround time for these products. And the availability, ability, excuse me, to be proactive in meeting the organization's needs would be accomplished if we were to add this second full-time employee. And as you can see, the request is uh, listed there about a little over $70,000. I don't know if Tony wants to talk about that a little bit more. We do have some numbers as to the amount of output that Tony has provided, at least through 2016. He's got all of that data to show, share with you the amount of work that he's been doing for this organization. Good afternoon, commissioners. Um, I can share with you either my full numbers for 2016 are current to 2017 right now, so it just depends on what, uh, how much information you want to have. Um, for 2016, and it, it looks at a total of graphic design projects, 
video projects and the amount of photo uh, requests that uh, we cover, whether it's covering you guys at special events or um, covering our departments to use in their print and design pieces. But the numbers for 2016, I, I touched 466 graphic design projects. Uh, those are small and large. Some of them are what uh, I've termed seven minute projects that I can, can chunk out pretty quick, like a social media graphic. Or they're a bigger encompassing project that might be an annual report or a department's full campaign, which might include four or five different pieces. Uh, video work, which, you know, we have a pretty good team between John, myself, and Tracy. So all three of us working together, that was uh, 101 videos completed. And now those were uh, mainly department videos or training videos, but they're also when you got, uh, your meeting goes off the air and we cover the rest of the meeting or uh, we film the bid board meetings or like you see John back there right now we're recording and filming this meeting for the general public so that is also included in those numbers and then for photography events was 113 now for this year to date I've already done 198 graphic design projects 88 picture uh, opportunities and we've about 43 different video requests completed already so. Commissioners, any comment? Uh, Commissioner Dennis. Thank you. Um, you do a great job, Tony. I, I Thank don't you, sir. take anything as a criticism. My, my question is, uh, could we do any of this uh, as a contracting it out rather than $71,000 for a, a full-time person? I believe there's probably, uh, that opportunity could work, sure. Uh, it's whatever direction you'd like us to pursue. I think the the obviously the the ideal candidate would be internal to where you'd have more flexibility on hours and 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 could work them in multiple different projects as a, as opposed to contracting to work on a specific project. Um, it just gives you more adaptability and flexibility to the work environment. Um, but uh, but we can look at the other as well. Just a question. Yeah. Not a criticism, trust me. If I couldn't take criticism in my profession, I'm in the wrong profession, so no worries. The beauty about Tony is uh, I think Tony's a prime example of what having a, a person on staff does for you because he's worked overtime, he's worked long hours, and um, you know probably uh, have been short short changed in his paycheck, but, uh, but we certainly have gotten our money's worth out of him, but I think he's running on empty and we need to give him some, we need to give him some support. Yeah, that's, a, that's a great comment by the manager. Years past, I used to provide what my hours total worked times my freelance rate, and, and it is uh, more. Okay. But you know he's very humble. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Can you ask a question about another? Sure. Areas? Oh, okay. Uh, the only other question I've got, and a grin uh, gets not a criticism it's just uh, an observation uh, I, I know you briefed at the beginning of this that we've got uh, an internal auditor and I've been here for four months and I've seen one real brief report from the internal auditor which didn't really give me any details so uh, I, I don't have a good grasp of what that internal auditor is doing for us all right perfect so we can get her uh, in front of you, you I, I purposely haven't sent you every report that she does uh, really, if any, uh, you know, my uh, main drive for her is I don't want her to be a punitive tool uh, in this uh, organization. Uh, so when she briefs me or sends me reports, you know, it's it's more she is working directly for those department division heads down in, out in the, within the organization. Uh, so uh, I don't want the department or division leaders to think that I'm taking this report and I am and scrutinizing them or, or you know, docking their pay or going to hit them on their performance appraisal. So I wanted some distance, uh, arm's length distance between me and them. She works directly for the, the deputy county manager uh, and he gets uh, all her reports, uh, but we can certainly get her in front of you to uh, uh, to get a, an ideal of what she's looking at and the amount of work that she has done. 
but she has touched almost every uh, department out there right now, and, and she gets down into the weeds that uh, you just wouldn't un you wouldn't think she's kind of unassuming. You wouldn't think she would, but she's uh, pretty detailed. She came, she came from the uh, working for the federal government in uh, you know, nuclear energy, so she knows uh, regulatory and uh, audit procedures and policies, and. Uh, can certainly uh, help us in our organization and has. So well, I'm not looking for something that would make the divisions, uh, departments, and so forth feel uncomfortable that we would get that information. Sure. Uh, because that would defeat the purpose of it. But uh, you're well aware of what an IG inspection yep. is and so forth. And, Which, and the commanders, yep. I know, are always uh, worried about them. But uh, uh, they you still need some kind of feedback to the leadership on what's going on sure. too, that, uh, and uh, make sure that that position is doing what you're wanting or uh, intending it to do. Sure. Uh, so, and we'll figure out what that looks like, whatever that reporting requirement is, and and, and uh, start uh, giving the commissioners a little taste of of what's going on in the in the organization. Okay. Anything else, Commissioner? Howell? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just a couple of comments or questions. I guess I didn't realize the ADA administration was under the manager's office. It, it, it seems like facilities ought to have, I guess, a lot to do with this, kind of being aware of what our ADA status is. And um, I, I don't remember this being under the manager's office in the past. Is this a change in some way? No, this has actually always been in the manager's office. And I think that uh, I think uh, a few years ago uh, when there was a a, uh, a big drive uh, to tackle the many ADA projects that were out there. Uh, the manager's office took direct control of that and actually had an actual person that worked up here uh, that specifically covered that. And 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 that's kind of the history of of the why it's been in the in the manager's office and we've kind of managed that. And it was under a contract with a consultant that we've been paying uh, to actually support uh, getting these. Uh, particular projects uh, knocked out, but uh, but that's why it's been under the. I know and this may be a premature question, but I'm just curious. You know, since we know that the uh, ADA administration cost is going to go up in 18, we don't. I'll try to look in the book to try to find out. Is there information in here about what that's going to look like? I, I can't seem to find it in the book. I'm not sure there's anything there yet. It's Might not have seen it. Yeah, two fifty. CIP, we don't yet have any costs right. into okay. this budget. So there will be a presentation on Tuesday that will outline what the requests look okay. like to have kind of a tentative CIP discussion. So you'll see it then. I do remember seeing a uh, kind of a, um, a long uh, plan a couple of years ago, maybe it was last year, that talked about things that were on our to-do list, that some things that were going to be done and some things that hadn't been funded yet. Is, is that report um, somewhere we can kind of see an updated report? That, is that what we're going to see later? Next week, is that the report we're going to see? We don't have the exhaustive list, okay. but I'm certain we can get that to you. Yeah, okay. And then the, the, the remaining couple of years of knocking out that particular list. So they've made a lot of headway in, in the past, uh, you know, four years or so in, in getting that, that list uh, down to where it is right now. Okay. And then I just, on, on slide number eight, I just noticed a little oddity there. It's an interfund transfer. Please remind me what that $465,000 17 number is and why it's zero and 18 and what's going to what's the future uh, for that line item what's going to happen next that's the cip amount okay that's the cip thank Correct. you very much I, okay, so that, that obviously is going to change then yes and sir. i was wondering um i was trying to find in the budget book uh, what is our total cost for kpts uh we're going to add twenty thousand dollars but what is our actual cost for kpts broadcasting 2016 actuals were 70 Seventy-five, I believe, seventy-five thousand. And that—that that is, that is an amount that hasn't seen a pay increase in, in years. So it's been pretty flat line on what they've charged us. Uh, this is the first year that they've really come to us, you know, based off of uh, the, a new station manager coming in, and really wanting to uh, increase um, the services that KT, KPTS provides. But I think this is one area where he looked at and said, hey, uh, you know, it's probably time to, to get a little pay. If, if I'm going to do all the changes that I want to, um, I need to start charging what. So this is roughly like an 18% increase then? Probably yes, sir. Percent ballpark. And, and that does not include the overage charges if we go over our two-hour 
broadcast. There's other charges that part of the are part of this. And so, is that is this, our, is this actual or is this um, budgeted? That's uh, the twenty thousand extra is a budgeted I'm amount. Sure, the seventy five and sixteen was is that actual. actual? That's actual. What we do to budget is look at every Wednesday that the meetings are scheduled, um, do an average of three hours because some meetings go beyond the two, but some don't really hit the four. And then we calculate that amount to set our budgeted rate for the year. Um, some years we go high, some years go low. Uh, it kind of depends on commission meetings. If we cancel a bunch, it'll be lower. If we have all of them and they go for four hours, it'll be higher. Does KPTS have any viewer stats in terms of how many people watch their show or what, just where, where people are that watch the, do they have any type of viewer stats that may be available and by the way we'll just say, I like KPTS it's not a it's not a negative towards them I just I'm just curious that how how much how useful is this to the to the viewing public are we are they watching these meetings and, and people you know I've actually had some people contact me from well outside Sedgwick County say we see your meetings and I think that's great um, primarily I think the intent is to, to communicate with our, our taxpaying public and people in our community but to the extent that Garden City or Dodge City wants to see our meeting I think it's great that they get the chance to see that but uh, uh, hopefully our, our target is you know people who live in our community primarily um, I'm just curious how how much viewership is there actually does anybody know that well I think it, but even more than that I think KPTS uh, provides uh, uh, community service just in uh, a lot of things that they do to support you know causes like veterans awareness um, and 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 really you know going out of their way to uh, to help campaigns to support uh, fundraising uh, events for for uh, areas like you know, veterans initiatives etc I know I've been involved in a couple, not only on screen, but also uh, they've asked me to do uh, speeches for for different things that they've put together for the community. So I think it's more than just uh, you know you know what comes on their their show every week, but but really they are truly involved in Sedgwick County and in the local community. And I, I agree with your comments. I again, I let me be clear. I, I like APTS, and that's not really my, certainly not my question. I just wonder if they have any viewership stat, you know, statistics. Maybe we might be able to. Oh, I'm sure they do. Be able to understand we can that. request you know, that. I guess ask for that. And there's two final comments. I, I do think the internal auditor is a, is a great move. I commend the the uh, uh, manager's office for making that change. I think it's I think it's smart for us to just constantly see what we're doing right and wrong and look for improvements. I think it's a, a brilliant uh, plan. So I appreciate you doing that. And and just for clarification, so Tony is our art director. All right. Yes. I did not know that. I appreciate Tony. He does a great job. And my comment is, I just really appreciate that office. They do a, a tremendous job. Everything I've ever asked them to do, they've just uh, done a, a, a superb, fa uh, fantastic, tremendous job. So I want to say thank you to them specifically. That's all my questions and comments. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And I apologize. I just received confirmation on the dollar amount for last year's actuals for KPTS. It was a little bit over sixty-five thousand. Okay. I apologize for the error. Uh, Commissioner Dennis? While we're on KPTS, uh, one thing that I reminded myself of, uh, I'd asked Kate once before, uh, when, when we go into executive session, we transmit uh, a little thing that says we're in executive session and it goes on forever. And uh, I've had some complaints from some uh, constituents that say, that, can't you use something else for that dead air time rather than just a static uh, uh, deal up there that says we're uh, in executive session, either broadcast some of Tony's videos or return it or to kill KPTS. The signal. Yeah, kill the signal and go to. That is actually something we did in the past, and I really don't have a good explanation of why we moved away from it. But uh, considering we have a nice arsenal of videos, we will look at start doing that again. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. And in correction, uh, Victor Hogstrom is a new CEO for KPTS. Okay. I don't see any other questions, so thank you very much. Thank you. Commissioners, our next presentation will be from the appraiser's office. We'll be on page 97 of your binder. And then Michael Borchard is here. Do you need to take a five minute break first or? You may need a break. I would like a five minute break, if it's okay. We would like a five minute break. Sure. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Okay. 
Well, but I mean, titles is all the things. Works. Is that a hint? I was going to say, you're not. Smith, please, you <laughs> Old military stuff, right? Wait a minute, I use that already. Okay, Lorian, I think we're here. If you're there, we'll. Okay, now we are ready for the appraiser's office. So I'll turn it over to Michael Borchard, and we are on page 97. Good afternoon, Commissioners. Good afternoon. Well, the mission of the Sedgwick, of Sedgwick County is to provide quality public services to our community so everyone can pursue freedom and prosperity in a safe, secure, and healthy environment. With the new county strategic plan and mission, the county manager asked departments to review and update their mission statements so they would align with the counties. So our leadership team got together. We struggled through that process but came to consensus that the new appraiser's office mission should be to annually produce a fair and equitable appraisal role used in formulating the funding for quality public services in our community. So the client and intended users of our mass appraisal, mass appraisal assignments in Kansas fall under the responsibility of county government. The county commissions are identified as the clients when they appoint the county appraiser. The intended users of the mass appraisal include the state of Kansas, school districts, and all the property taxing jurisdictions located within the county. The results of this mass appraisal are used for ad valorem property tax purposes. Tax revenues are distributed to jurisdictions to provide the funding for those public services. Annually producing a mass appraisal in a jurisdiction the size of Sedgwick County requires internal departments that are specialized. The five cost centers in our budget are a breakdown of those specialized areas. We have an administration cost center, a commercial real estate cost center, a residential and agricultural real estate cost center. We have a special use property and appraisal support cost center. And there's a little more detail of each of the re department's responsibility included in the slides for you to review. Just a couple of performance measures. In, t in 2016, the state of Kansas Division of Property Evaluation commended the Central County Appraiser's Office for successfully achieving substantial compliance. And we certified the 2016 appraisal role to the clerk in a timely manner. Eighty-eight percent of our budget is personnel. Our office has worked very hard to maximize efficiencies in our processes. This chart shows a comparison of parcels per employee in some of the larger counties in Kansas. See that Sedgwick County has 65 employees, Johnson County 87 employees, Wyandotte County 33 employees, and Shawnee County 22 employees. This graph demonstrates how the number of appraiser's office employees has declined over time and how the number of parcels has increased. We were, we were able to make this reduction in force by incorporating new technology, consolidating all employees into one location. We were, of course, also aided by a significant slowdown in the real estate market during the recession and the exemption of commercial and industrial machinery and equipment. I want to show a couple slides here that demonstrate that the local real estate market has been recovering. Uh, for example, in 2016, we had to process 3,000 more sales 
than we did back during the recession. This slide shows that in 2016, we processed around 600 more permits than we did during the recession. So we've been able to complete our annual assignments by reallocating resources and using technology to realize efficiencies. The International Association of Assessing Officers recently completed an assessment industry compensation survey. The work done here in Sedgwick County over the last five years to better align to the market, we, we believe, has had an impact on attracting employees. We think there's still some work to be done in the mid and upper range pays. Uh, we plan to work with HR and use this survey to see where we align with the rest of the industry. So our 2018 Overall budget request is down 5.84% from 2017. As I mentioned before, 88% of the budget is personnel. The 34% reduction in contractuals is due to last year's increase to pay for the aerial oblique imagery flight. I would like to mention that still included in the 2018 requested budget is about 235000 which is the cost to locate the appraiser's office outside of a county-owned building. So moving to the Ronald Reagan building may reduce contractuals even more. So $4,731,414 this is our request for 2018, and we would ask for your support on that. I would like to take a minute to thank Nancy Delgado for all her help for helping make the presentation and for managing the budget throughout the year, and thanks to Carly as well. If you, if you have any questions, I'll be happy to try to answer them. Um, Mike, just so I understood, in your... 218 requested budget under contractuals that does include the rent for a year on our space down on Perry? Yes. Okay. When when do we think we're moving to the Reagan building with your office? That yet we're hoping year? November, December. Okay, so okay. Just so I know what I'm looking at here. Uh, Commissioner Howell. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I was just curious on the uh, compensation review. Is that something your office commissioned uh, on your own, basically? Yes. Okay. And can you talk about your your attrition and the issues you're dealing with in terms of? Um, I can tell you, staff you're losing and what kind of property? yeah. Over the last ten years, we had some significant turnover in the appraiser's office, um, primarily. From what we heard in exit interviews, was it was it was compensation. So I think over the last five years, the Evergreen uh, survey process uh, increased our our entry level pay, and this last this last uh, compression study also increased the beginning pay somewhat as well. So okay, so. In terms of staff turnover, do you have any kind of numbers? Uh, what kind of attrition deal? I, I don't have anything with me, but I can certainly get those. Be for nice you. to know. You said you mentioned ten years. But if you have any data going back a little ways, it'd be nice to see how that's changed. Because I, I know there's been a number mm -hmm. of corrections made since the Evergreen study and plus compression address being addressed last year. It'd be nice to know kind of where we're at. And then, uh, you know, these folks they, they leave the appraiser's office. Are they? Staying local, or are they moving away, or do we have any idea? Are we doing any follow-up type work? And yeah, most of them are moving away. They're moving away. <coughs> yeah. Okay. I guess I'd like to know a little bit more about that. Um, anyway, uh, all right. Well, again, I think the housing uh, data is very, uh, very encouraging. I was curious about curious about the building permits. I know the two charts on page five. One of them goes back to 2006. One of them goes back to 2009. Do you have data on building permits going back to 2006? 
Um, we, we converted to our new uh, software system in 2009, and the coding is significantly different between the old mainframe and, and our new uh, okay. system. So this is the most accurate data I could get at this point. Okay. All right. Thank you. That's all I'm Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? Well, Mr. Fraser, thank you. Thank you. Brian? Okay. Commissioners, we are ready for our last presentation of the day. It will be on the Department of Finance finance programs and community development. We'll be starting with the Department of Finance on page 65, <coughs> and Lindsay Poruso will be presenting. So I'll turn it over to Lindsay. All right, and commissioners, while you were on break, um, I put the handouts at your seats. So you might check under your appraisers one if you're looking for the two handouts that I'll be going through today. So um, I will be presenting two separate presentations to you today. First of all, we'll cover the Department of Finance and the operations um, conducted within our office, along with the other areas that finance oversees, and then we'll transition into community development uh, and talk about economic development, technical education, and the other programs that are within that area. And I am allotted for 45 minutes, but I'll try and talk fast since I know I'm the last one on a Friday afternoon. So for finance, uh, our mission is to assure informed financial decision making and the proper use of public resources by Sedgwick County government. So as I talked about, we'll talk about finance operations, which includes the CFO's office, accounting, budget, purchasing and risk management. We'll talk about budgeted transfers, our contingency reserves, uh, our debt service fund, which is called bond and interest. And then we'll talk about interest bank arena. So finance has budget responsibility for about $59 million total. Of that, about $7.4 million is for operations themselves. So that's about 13% of the total responsibility that we have. Um, on this slide here, you will see technical education, WSU, and economic development listed. We will talk about those during the community development presentation. Our operations, um, like I said, are carried out through five separate groups um, comprised of 34 full-time equivalent positions. Within the CFO's office, we have three FTEs that provide strategic planning, uh, Department of Finance oversight and tax system oversight, along with uh, the contract with BKD currently for our audit. The budget office has five FTE positions. Uh, the budget office is responsible for the financial forecast, budget development, monitoring, and oversight, along with reporting to ensure that divisions are living within their resources. Of course, one of the new strategic results from the strategic plan is that divisions, 100% of divisions will live within their allocated budget, uh, and that is primarily a function that the budget office is responsible for overseeing. Accounting uh, is made up of 14 full-time positions. Uh, that area oversees and processes revenue and expenses and ensures the timely completion of our comprehensive annual financial report, uh, which again is in our strategic plan that that will be completed each year by June 30th, and we'll talk about that here in just a bit. Purchasing also uh, is within the Department of Finance. There are eight FTEs there that implement and oversee um, Charter 68, which is the new purchasing charter that you all adopted earlier this year. And then, of course, there's risk management, um, which comprised, is comprised of um, the risk management function itself, which is essentially our insurance function for the county, along with workers' compensation. So for the CFO's office, the mission is to assure, of course, informed financial decision-making and the proper use of public resources by Sedgwick County government. We do that through department management of the four other divisions we talked about, through the audit, um, through our tax system director, who you've worked with quite a bit lately related to uh, the TIF. Um, he also works on other analysis for economic development proposal proposals. 
We have the sheriff foreclosure sale that's done through the treasurer's office and the sheriff's office and uh, also finance. So that support is provided out of the CFO's area. And then of course the strategic financial planning is a component of that area. Our strategic measures for the CFO's office, of course, are our um, bond ratings. We have very high bond ratings. Uh, and SNP gave us a financial management assessment of strong, which is the strongest or the highest rating that they give. Uh, again, we have the strategic plan that says that the CAFR needs to be completed each year by June 30th, and that we have budget adherence by 100% of divisions. Our budget request for 2018 is all in the general fund. It totals $612,944. That's a decrease of just about 5%, and you'll see that all of that occurs within personnel uh, due to attrition of positions. Moving then to budget, budget's mission is to allocate resources for basic and essential services while maintaining, I'm sorry, long-term financial health uh, of the organization. Uh, the programs that are offered through the budget office include preparation of our certified budget, which is required to be turned into the state each year by August 25th, and of course all of the statutory requirements that go along with that. Financial and program analysis for you all and for the county manager and his executive team. Of course, budget administration after you all adopt the budget to make sure that folks are adhering to it. Um, and then providing monthly, quarterly, and annual reporting to you so that you understand how those resources are being used. The strategic measures for budget include 100% um, adherence to the adopted budget. And of course, we have good controls in our financial system that allow us to make sure that that <coughs> happens. Uh, we do say that in 2016, uh, we do have 100% adherence. Uh, when we take into account that even though there was a transfer at year end for the zoo, that was done from earmarked funds in the BOCC contingency. The general fund uh, is required to have an unrestricted balance um, of at least 20% of the adopted general fund budget. We ended 2016 with 28%. Uh, so well over our threshold. Um, and then, of course, one of the measures we talk about uh, in terms of strategic oversight and uh, the financial viability of the organization is price of government. That is a term that was coined 15, 20 years ago, um, and it basically measures a, um, the public's our constituents' ability and willingness to support government. Uh, when there is two too high of a price of government, you have disenchantment from citizens because they feel as though they're being overtaxed. Uh, on the flip side, if you don't have enough invested in services, people become disenchanted because they feel like they're not getting the services um, that they believe they're paying for. And so you can see that for Sedgwick County, we have, uh, we're hovering at about 94.94 cents, so less than one penny per dollar of personal income in 2016. And you can see that over time those numbers somewhat fluctuate, but we're pretty well within that range um, on, a, on a given year. Uh, last year the county manager talked about how there had been some expectations for public safety resources uh, and how that was included in the recommended budget that you all adopted. And so that's, uh, that's a way to kind of correct for any potential disenchantment. And so we see that as a good thing that we were able to address those services without the personal, this, this metric going up much higher. Uh, yes, sir. What's, what's kind of an average benchmark for that number? It, it depends on which level of government you're at and what types of services um, you receive. For us, for a, t a county that offers services like this, uh, about a penny is normally about one penny to 1.4 is about the normal benchmark ratio. Um, but it also depends entirely on what types of fees you collect, what type of taxes you do. Um, so if you're operating a sewer district, maybe if you'll have a higher rate. Okay. Thank you. We're thinking this is pretty good, though, right? Yes, we are right where we should be. Like I said, a, a, that penny to about a penny point four is, is generally kind of the standard, and, and we're just a little bit below that. And uh, we, I would trust that you as commissioners would hear any feedback about the types of services and incorporate that into the budget process as necessary. Okay, thank you. Okay. 
So this is a very brief summary of 2018, uh, the 2018 budget request from budget. Uh, it is up just a bit. As with the CFO, that's a function of personnel. Uh, we do do the budget based on a point in time. And so based on February, the salaries and everything that were in the budget office um, are, are what's generated here. And uh, we'll have some correction uh, within the budget as we move forward to the recommended stage. But you can see otherwise, contractuals and commodities remain the same, uh, only about $20,000 to support the budget office. Moving then to accounting, the accounting's mission is to coordinate human and financial resources necessary to provide quality financial support services to internal and external customers. Uh, the programs they offer include general accounting and financial reporting, payroll, my personal favorite, uh, accounts payable, banking services, investment and cash, cash management, along with grant management. Accounting strategic measures are reflected here for 2016. Uh, the CAFR, again, the strategic measures that it be delivered by June 30th. Last year it was delivered to you all in April. We anticipate meeting uh, the June 30th deadline this year. Um, you'll either have the CAFR presented to you at the first or second meeting in June uh, for 2016 fiscal year. The average days from the receipt of the invoice by the county to issuance of payment is 5.38 days. That's what it was in 2016. Many of our contacts include a provision that says 30 days, and so we are well exceeding that. We think that that's important, of course, so that our vendors are getting their money uh, to mitigate any cash flow issues because we do have so many local vendors and that's important to them. In 2016, we issued 94,043 payments and you can see in the graph that the payments issued by accounts payable staff themselves has gone down a bit, uh, just over 50,000 issued last year. Uh, many of those things, those metrics will go down and we expect them to continue to go down as folks uh, become more in engaged with our purchasing system. And they're able to do those annual shopping carts that we want them to do to plan for their expenses right at the beginning of the year. And so that explains kind of that slight decrease. And like I said, we expect that to go down as they move to that system. So. Any questions about those metrics? Is it, there's no advantage to us to pay in 15 days. I mean, can we keep the money longer and have it? I mean, 5.38 days is really pretty fast. It, it really is. Um, you know, there, there probably could be a very small return in investment income, but because we only get about a million eight a year, I'm not sure it would be Okay. so significant, um, but certainly it's something we can look into and see if maybe there is any benefit well, in holding no. on to that just a bit longer. Uh, I mean, in general, I mean, small business vendors, they, they want their money quick, so I mean, I'm Absolutely. glad we're doing that, but I mean, it, it, if there was some big advantage, I mean, a few days longer, not going to make us look bad, sure. but... Okay, well, we'll I'll be happy to no, no, I, I don't look want into that any and see. Work. <laughs> I mean, you got plenty to do right now, but... Uh, in, in general, if you're saying we can't make a bunch of money and by holding them another four or five days, and I'm good with that. Okay. All right, so then moving to accounting's 2018 budget request, you'll see that there's just a minimal change, again, mostly associated with personnel. When we look at that slide, you'll see a big uh, commodities percentage change but that's a little overblown uh, just because if you look at the amount, that amount decreased by $15,000 and was just reallocated up to the contractuals line. And it's just because of the sheer amount of the starting point that the percentage looks so dramatic, but $15,000 from commodities to contractuals explains that difference. Moving then to purchasing, the mission of purchasing is to facilitate the procurement of all necessary products and services for Sedgwick County by following all applicable rules and laws governing government procurement in order to protect the monetary assets through prudent expenditures of taxpayers' money. And their primary program, of course, is purchasing. Purchasing's 2016 strategic measures are shown here. Uh, of course, we want to have a very competitive purchasing process to ensure that we have, um, or that we can give assurance to the public that we are spending their taxpayer dollars um, as efficiently as possible. And so these measures show that purchasing is certainly successful in doing that. In 2016, the percent of all solicitations that went out with multiple vendors responding was about 98%. In conjunction with that, 
it's not just that there were two vendors who were responding. On average, the number of vendors per bid was 8.4. So we were getting some very competitive um, efforts, we feel, out of that process by virtue of having the multiple vendors and, and so many um, that we could get the most effective uh, and efficient price and service for our organization. Likewise, we have those members in our community who may not be able to compete necessarily um, just uh, against the bigger players that may come involved. And so we are very proud to say that the percent of responses from our disadvantage, disadvantaged business enterprises was at 16.34%. And I don't have the latest statistics because we're going through and updating our vendor master file. Um, but at this time last year, only about 7 or 8% of the vendors in our database uh, were disadvantaged businesses. And so to have that many participating in um, the bids shows that really we're doing an effective job of reaching out to those folks and getting them to participate in the process. Uh, in 2007, or I'm sorry, 2016, the number of purchases made through our procurement office was 10,736. So they were busy. Their budget requests went down just a bit, 1.8% over the 2017 revised. Again, that's all in personnel as we had some folks uh, who were in their positions for a long time leave and those were filled with less expensive folks. Um, and so that results in that slight decrease in personnel. Moving then to risk management. The mission of risk management is to protect Sedgwick County assets and provide a safe work environment for employees, thus ensuring their ability to provide uninterrupted delivery of quality services to citizens of Sedgwick County. I think that word uninterrupted is really uh, kind of the key buzzword for risk management. The programs they offer are workers' compensation administration, so that when our employees get hurt on the job and they make claims, uh, we have a case manager essentially who sits up in an office and works those claims and handles the claim payment uh, in-house. And it also, of course, serves the loss mitigation and claims, claims management function. Again, they're kind of the insurance company uh, for Sedgwick County because we do so much in-house. The risk management strategic measures for 2016 are shown here. The cost of risk per employee, so basically how much we spent from our risk management fund and settlements and claims um, and other insurance pro programs um, was about $526 per employee last year. Uh, the number of work comp claims that were uh, put in last year, new ones, were 314. Um, and the number of new auto and liability claims was 181. That slide below depicts uh, those two numbers together over time, the number of new claims that are coming in. And you can see that we've done a good job of holding fairly steady um, over the last nine or 10 years. So risk management's budget is uh, in two funds. There's the risk management reserve fund. You can see that that amount of uh, request is $1,730,717, a 10% increase. That's in contractuals. Because the risk management fund is not a property tax supported fund, we allow divisions to do requests in a different way. They aren't held to the same flat budget standard and you'll see that <laughs> reflected in some of the grants you've already seen lately. Uh, because of the claims costs that we've paid over the last few years, we've increased that budget request. We have a contingency there, you might recall, uh, that was added that was new last year. Um, and we've, uh, we've just seen the amount and the cost of claims going up. We've had to come to the commission multiple times over the last three years to ask for additional budget authority. We feel that adding that into the contractuals and into the contingency will allow us to make, get those claims paid more quickly and more efficiently um, when we know that they're, they're necessary and they're generally approved by you or through our county counselor's office. The workers' comp reserve fund is uh, supported through charges to individual departments. Each department has a certain number of claims that they've turned in and a certain amount we've had to pay, and our risk manager goes through and calculates a percentage based on those to fairly assess each department based on the amount of cost they've um, caused the county so that we can then generate enough revenue to support this workers' comp program. And so that budget has stayed mostly flat. It went down about $80. Um, and you can see how those two uh, functions together look. Um, their budget request went from 3618000 to 3779000 
So in summary for the finance operations, the Department of Finance, you'll see that these are the individual uh, divisions that are overseen. The total budget request from all of them is $7,397,195 or about a 2% increase over the 2017 revised budget. We don't have any decision packages, revenue packages, or alternative reduction proposals to talk about. So we'll shift gears a little bit now to the finance programs, those other things that finance has a responsibility to oversee, um, but are not a part of our day-to-day -day operations. So the first one we'll talk about is budgeted transfers, which is on page 88 of your binders if you wanna look. Um, I think it's important to distinguish the, what a budgeted transfer is. State law tells us that we can only move money from the general fund to another fund under very specific circumstances, and we have to have explicit statutory authority to do so. It's not like a transfer of budget authority uh, between you know, two different cost centers. This is actual cash moving out of the general fund and going into another fund. So the 2017 revised budget shows a total budget for these types of expenses of $5,437,300. The 2018 request right now is only $1,500,000, and I just want to take a moment to walk through why that is, and it's, it's uh, illustrated up on this slide here. So at the end, the 2017 budget um, had been adopted by the commission. There was a CIP amendment to do floors four through six of the Ronald Reagan building, and so that was $1,937,300. Um, that budget authority came from a contingency and went into the budgeted transfers and was made from that account to our CIP fund uh, to support those expenses. Because that was a one-time expense, it's not recurring and we're not planning for it again in 2018. We also know that the law enforcement training facility was a CIP project that we had a second year of funding this year. We were uh, committed to $2.85 million from the 2017 budget. Of that, we were able to find a little more than 1.2 million within our uh, CIP reserve and some older projects that we had, and so we simply sh moved that money within the CIP fund the rest of that difference, the $1,580,215 that's shown here, had to come from the general fund to flesh that fully out, that $2.85 million allocation. And so again, because that allocation was made in 17 and we don't expect it to recur in 18, we haven't put that budget authority in our request for the 18 year. Risk management is supported through a transfer, primarily through a transfer of funds from the general fund to the risk management fund. You can see that in 2017, the budget included 1.1 million for that. Uh, we may need a little more, although we also planned as a part of the 2017 budget to use $300,000 of fund balance in the risk budget, in the risk management budget to intentionally have and draw down that fund balance. And so um, the 2018 request restores that to a more normal amount, a more normal amount of 1.4 million. We also had in the 2017 adopted budget a preventive road and bridge maintenance uh, cash allocation of 566000 uh, that we are not planning to recur again at this point um, for 2018 budget development. And then, of course, um, we often have opportunities where folks need um, grant matches. Uh, one that has historically been uh, supported through this was the District Attorney's Violence Against Women Act grant. That grant has been discontinued, and so we, have, we don't have the same uh, need for the amount of funding in this fund, and so that request was diminished to $100,000 for 2018, which is how we get to the $1.5 million number, the risk management transfer and that miscellaneous grant transfer that we may need. The reason we do this is because every time we do a transfer of actual cash from a fund to another fund, it requires resolution from the commission. And so by doing this through the budget process, we're able to get that resolution. Otherwise, we have to come back to you for a specific authority to do those. So shifting then to contingency reserves. Again, um, most of our budget lives uh, within the general fund. And that fund is what's called certified under state law. And that means that any time we want to amend that general fund budget, if we wanted to increase the total allocation, we would have to go through a budget adoption process, publication, public hearing, and then formal action by the board. And so to uh, be able to avoid that, we establish con contingency reserves so that we can quickly access budget authority if necessary in an emergency or if there's just unanticipated events that come up through the course of the year that we need to be able to um, access 
access that budget authority. Of course, anything greater than $250,000 from any of these contingencies requires your approval per policy. Um, and then there are some other restrictions in place based on what the county manager can approve and what the budget director can approve. But those things are, are advised, or you are made aware of those as those happen. So uh, the request is $19,323,585. Um, it actually brings the um, 2018 request in line with the 2017 adopted budget. Um, there's no difference between those numbers, but this $17.7 million figure you see for 2017 just shows that those contingencies have been accessed. They have been used so far this year. Most significantly, that $1.9 million we talked about for the floors four through six and Ronald Reagan that expense happened from budgeted transfers, but because it happened after budget authority, we had to take the budget authority from contingency reserves and get it in the right spot to make the payment. So that is the most significant difference here. So then moving to bond and interest, um, we've talked about this quite a bit and looked at the numbers this year, so I'm not gonna go into a ton of detail, um, but the 2018 bond and interest budget is $17,887,904. Of that $20,000 would be for any fees we may need to pay through the course of a year related to um, any issuance costs or bond council help that we have to, or I'm sorry, not bond council, uh, financial advisor help we may need. Um, and so the principal and interest costs are also reflected here at $17,867,904. And you can see that it is a decrease from the 2017 budget. And that's again, because we don't have any new debt issuances this year that would cause that debt service number to go up. So then shifting gears entirely out of finance and going to the interest bank arena. Um, and that is pretty far back in your book, page 461 behind your culture and rec tab. The mission of interest bank arena is to be a modern first class sports and entertainment venue of course, owned by Sedgwick County and operated by SMG, providing 15,000 seats for basketball games. The Interest Bank Arena is home to indoor sporting events, concerts, family shows, and other entertainment. And so what you will see in the 2018 request takes the typical operating expenses that we pay to SMG along with their current CIP request that, of course, the commission will see and uh, consider uh, in the fall of this year. And so that reflects an increase to $1,945,375 in 2018. Those would be contractual payments, excuse me, those would be contractual payments that we just make to the interest bank arena. Um, that's opposed to the arena C, uh, or entrance C remodel that's happening this year, which is actually reflected on the county's books. And so it's not a payment that's made to interest bank arena. So. Any questions about any of the finance or interest bank arena operations? If not, I will jump into community development. Commissioners, any questions? A lot of information. Yes. Uh, Commissioner Hall. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just a couple of clarifications on page seven. Number of payments is 94,000, but the chart below shows it's about 51,000, 52,000. Am I? I'm just curious what the number is. The, the distinction there, and I let me hop to that page. So the number of payroll payments issued is actually just payroll. Um, oh, the see. the payments issued by accounts, pay, accounts payable, which is a separate division, would be the, the checks that are paid mostly to outside vendors or potentially okay. some right. some employees if they're being reimbursed for something. Okay, that, that makes sense. And then I had a couple other quick questions here. Just because it's a familiar number, is that that number, uh, page 14, preventative road and bridge maintenance at 566, is that what I think it is? Yes, it was the cash funded portion. There's also a million dollars in the highway fund. Okay, and then if uh, if there's recovered funds, does that somehow get corrected to this number at some point, or how does that money get put into the budget somewhere if there's money that's recovered it ever? So if there's savings through road and bridge, you mean? Or if, if through just in general? Well, again, this is probably the, the money that was uh, stolen, I'm trying to say. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. David Spears, one thing we're going to do, Commissioner, go to a six year instead of a five on the preventive maintenance. Next year, do preventive maintenance every six years instead of every five. 
and okay. so that will take less money per year. The other thing on Tuesday, you will see that's a CIP presentation, and we have uh, we we've, we've got to talk about bonding again. Okay. And this will tie in with the bridges and everything, and tie into what's happened from 15 to 18. Okay. Um. All right. Just I guess a, a comment. And it looks to me like our our debt service is going down by about one and a half million dollars in just two years. I think that's pretty good. It's a, it's a good, great trend for the county. That's all my questions and comments. Thank you, Mr. Chair. All right. Thank you. Lindsay, I don't see anyone else asking to speak, so we will move forward. All right. Community development it is. And you should have that packet also at your seats. And we talked about Tony earlier. Uh, during the manager's presentation, I would just like to point out that he designed kind of these custom slides this year that are aligned with the strategic plan, and I think they look pretty cool. So I just wanted to make that comment real quickly. So getting into community development then. Uh, the mission of the community development function generally is to promote the growth of a healthy and productive community that successfully integrates the natural, the social, and the economic environment. The divisions that you'll hear about in my presentation today include the Extension Council, our Economic Development Program, uh, the Community Development Community Programs, Technical Education, which includes, at least as we call it now, WOTC and NCAT, uh, and then we'll talk about WSU. You will see in your budget books that the housing program is also contained within community development, but that will be talked about as a part of the aging presentation next week. So then going to the Extension Council's 2018 budget request, which is on page 478 of your binders back behind the Community Development tab, you'll see that the mission for Extension is to, is to be dedicated to a safe, competitive food and fiber system and to strong, healthy communities, families, and youth through integrated research, analyses, and education. So their budget request uh, for 2018 will cover the following services. Of course, in partnership with K-State, they will provide the educational programs that we're all used to to the citizens of Sedgwick County. They'll also provide senior health insurance counseling, uh, better known as SHIC. Uh, that assistance is provided to seniors and their caregivers <coughs> for Medicare options. In 2016, more than 3,200 seniors were able to take advantage of that service through the Extension Council. Agriculture is the second largest industry in Sedgwick County, and the Extension Council provides research-based information to assist producers to be more efficient and profitable. The Extension Council also provides a home for the 4-H Youth Program, which provides more than 10,000 youth with hands-on learning experiences related to farming and animal husbandry. Uh, also, the Sedgwick County Master Gardener Program is operated through the Extension Council. Um, those volunteers contributed more than 19,000 hours across the community last year. Um, and of course, our county courthouse complex here has uh, some of the landscaping provided by those Master Gardeners. The K-State Research and Extension in Sedgwick County provide nutrition education to those families with limited resources uh, through research-based programs. And of course, it serves as a community gathering spot and also hosts uh, farmers markets. So their 2018 request at this point is flat with a 2017 allocation at $825,481, which is paid out as a contractual to the extension. Shifting then to economic development, on page 487, the mission of that program is to promote a strong and diverse regional economy by enhancing opportunities for businesses to retain or attract new jobs within the county. The programs include evaluation of business expansion and retention projects uh, to determine the propriety of um, incentives. It involves the administration of incentive agreements approved in prior years and it supports non-governmental business and economic development organizations. It does that through three primary programs, Economic Development Administration, which is shown on this slide. Uh, the 2018 request is $1,959,314. There's also the Foreign Trade Zone, which is a way in which um, companies that are 
participating in um, foreign exports can come in and not have to pay excise taxes. And while they're in this uh, marked zone, um, they are not subject to U.S. Customs regulations. And then, of course, there's Economic Development Grants, which is our uh, Community Development Block Grant program, and that offers um, some opportunities for loans to those folks in our community with low or modest income who want to expand or grow business outside of the city of Wichita limits. And so you can see that that's what comprises that $2,003,314 request. This is how that budget request is broken out. Um, there's a small amount in personnel for the one FTE uh, who supports this program. You can see the bulk of it, of course, is in contractuals, uh, though we don't necessarily forecast to spend all of that money. We do have the budget authority housed there um, as opportunities arise. And then we have a small amount of commodities. Uh, the 2017 revised budget does reflect a $15,000 transfer from this program to the Culture and Rec Community Programs uh, for Riverfest. Um, the 2018 request restores about $5,000 of that, but we have left $10,000 of the request over in culture and rec community programs, and you'll hear about that next week. So then moving to community development, community programs, the mission is to promote the growth of a healthy and productive community that successfully integrates the natural, the social, and the economic environment. The two programs that are supported through this budget are for uh, Wichita Transit Authority, primarily for Oaklawn Transit, and then uh, $8,000 for the Mediation Center. The Wichita Transit Authority provides specialized transportation services. Uh, this service provides access for more than 3,000 residents for employment, education, and other destinations at an affordable cost. Um, at this point, the projected ridership is expected to remain about the same into the future. The Mediation Center, uh, which also receives funding through this program, provides a service des designed to resolve issues without the involvement of more costly court intervention. And those services are available to anyone in Sedgwick County. Uh, the total request for this program is $46,795. It's all within contractuals, but this is how it's allocated to the two services that receive the benefit. $38,795 for the Wichita Transit Oakland program and $8,000 for the Mediation Center. So then moving to technical education. The mission is to provide students with a state-of-the-art technical education, whether they are here for the beginning, state of their education, or returning to gain further training for new skills. Again, the two programs are for WOTC, um, a direct allocation to WOTC, along with the utility reimbursement uh, that we provide to NCAT for the space that NIAR uses at our NCAT facility. Now we know that the affiliation is occurring between WSU and WOTC and as we learn what those terms really mean and should be, we'll update our terminology to reflect that. Uh, for now, uh, the description that we have of WOTC is that it's dedicated to serving business in an industry in South Central Kansas through the delivery of a comprehensive portfolio of programs meeting their needs and ensuring students develop the right skills. Uh, for the NCAT utility reimbursement, WOTC is the designated operator for our NCAT campus. Sedgwick County reimburses WOTC as the operator for utilities, repairs, cleaning, security, and maintenance costs associated with the WSU NIAR space at NCAT. Those two programs together total $904,000, uh, which is consistent with the 2017 revised budget amount. Um, and certainly we'll engage you all in more conversation about that as we learn more about what that affiliation means for Sedgwick County. Moving then to Wichita State University, uh, page 500 of your books. Uh, the WSU mission is to provide or is to be committed to providing comprehensive educational opportunities in an urban setting. Through teaching, scholarship, and public service, the university seeks to equip both students and the larger community with the educational and cultural tools they need to thrive in a complex world. The um, slide that's shown now uh, reflects the 2017 revised budget along with our estimated um, revenue that we believe the 1.5 mills that's specifically dedicated to WSU will generate. We'll be working with them over the next month to understand how that will be allocated, but this slide here shows uh, that the bulk of that money that's received by WSU goes to student support, including scholarships. Um, as always, 
because, again, this is a certified fund, we include a $300,000 contingency in the budget, greater than the amount of revenue we really think they'll receive, so that just in case we wind up receiving more revenue than we expect, we have the budget authority in place to get those funds to them. Uh, for the community development programs that you've seen today, there are no decision packages, alternative reductions, or revenue packages. In summary, uh, they together represent an $11,885,153 request, which is 1.5% more um, than what was in the 2017 revised budget. And with that, I'm happy to stand for any questions. Otherwise, I'm done. You can take a deep breath now. Commissioners, any questions? Brilliant presentation. It must have been. Yes. Uh, I, did we talk to the Extension Council about their budget allocation? I mean, they know, or did they talk to us? I have not, but I'll let Tim maybe address that question. Okay. Well, we have frequently heard directly from many of their folks, and thank you very much for that. Um, okay, commissioners, anything else? <coughs> Commissioner Hal. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just because last year the uh, Oakland transportation. Situation was completely mm -hmm. redone. Uh, I know they redid all the bus lines and they actually mm -hmm. lost quite a bit of service. I'm just curious if we can get some ridership numbers to find out if this is actually being utilized. I hope it is. I'd like to confirm that uh, so I can hopefully defend that spending. But uh, there's just, I think, I think, what I just want me, let me say it in my own words, I guess, but whatever dollars the 1.5 mills generates, that's exactly what we give to WSU. So right. our budget is designed to absorb or, or give up whatever money it needs to to make that exact um, transfer of funds is that correct well it is this is the one of the only funds that does never get a technical adjustment through that process and so what what you all adopt is the budget authority amount and then depending on what we collect is what they actually get not necessarily tied specifically to the budget right. okay. that, that helps. and they just um, I may have missed it because I was trying to Parts of this. I'm sorry if I missed it, but can you please go back and, and talk about the Economic Development Administration General Fund? What is what's included in that again? So uh, primarily, the Economic Development Program um, supports one FTE, uh, which is filled. Then there is also budget authority there um, of about 1.9 million dollars in contractuals. For now, uh, the commission has authorized the $300,000 payment to Greater Wichita Partnership. So that's paid from here. Any payments to any other economic development organizations would come from here. Um, if we had any incentives that we needed to pay out, it would be supported through this budget. This essentially provides the capacity to do that, though again, we don't necessarily forecast to spend that full $1.9 million in contractuals. Do we have a, a, a 2016, uh, an actual I can look at somewhere? What page would that be on? Uh, sure. Let me. Commissioner, if you look at page 491 of your binder, this is what breaks out with some specificity uh, the types of programs that we're supporting. And you can see that 2016 actuals paid from this program were $542,502, including personnel costs. So it's just about for more than $450,000 in contractual payments. And that would have included $300,000 for the Greater Wichita Partnership membership along with a $60,000 uh, SCED payment last year. Okay. So the, uns okay, and the unspent dollars that are in that budget for 2016 actual, we we budget, what, what, what did we budget in 2016? It would have been very similar to that $1.8 million in contractuals okay all right so 
my questions. Thank you, okay. Mr. Chairman. Uh, Commissioner Randall. Yeah, uh, on the, the same line, the, the contractuals, the budget's 1.9 million. What's the forecast? The forecast for 2017 for contractuals only is $561,840. For 2017, you're asking for? Are you asking for 2018? No, no, no. Okay. Well, that's 2018 is $432,627. And the primary reason for that difference is that we are technically still in the fifth year of the net app incentive where they could come and request funding. The last time we made a payment to, those, to them, though, was 2015. And so we've got it in the forecast for this year um, on the if they have right. that, but that would go away in 2017. Yes, I'm sorry. Thank you. <laughs> Anything else? Thank you, Linda. Okay. Thank you, Commissioners. That was our final presentation for the day. We do have time scheduled if there's any discussion you would like to have. If not, I would recommend we adjourn for the day. All right. Well, <clears throat> Commissioners, uh, any general questions, discussion, comment? At this time, it's only 10 to 4 on Friday afternoon. We have time. But it's 5 o'clock somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, commissioners, any questions? Any comments from staff? Okay, well, Lorian, we'll take your advice and we'll adjourn for today. Okay, we'll be back Monday at 8.30. Thank you. Monday at 8.30. Yes. That's an